Good afternoon, Vancouver. I'm Mayor Ann McInerney Ogle, and today is Thursday, August 5th. Thank you to Seven Star and Sarah Hay for our American Sign Language interpreters. Over the last two weeks, our community has seen a spike in the positive COVID-19 cases as the highly contagious Delta variant continues to spread. While the news is disheartening, our community is adaptable. We can take comfort in knowing that there are proven tools available to slow the spread and prevent serious illness and death from this unpredictable virus. First and foremost, we know that getting vaccinated provides the best protection. A regional public health report analyzing the vaccination status of Southwest Washington residents hospitalized for COVID-19 so that vaccination can reduce the risk of hospitalization by as much as 90%. The state's data tells a similar story. Between February and June, at least 94% of COVID cases, deaths, and hospitalizations of Washington residents 12 and older occurred in those who were not fully vaccinated. In addition to getting the shot, masks are our next best line of defense. Last week, new CDC data show that even the fully vaccinated have the potential to spread the Delta variant. As a result of our surging case rates and updated guidance from the CDC, Clark County Public Health has recommended that everyone, regardless of vaccination status, resume wearing masks indoors to help prevent the spread of the virus. And while the mask guidance is a recommendation and not a requirement for those who are fully vaccinated, please consider your risks and what's at stake if our case rates continue to climb. Even if vaccinated, consider wearing a mask when you visit public places where you do not know the vaccination status of those around you, where those who are too young to be vaccinated are present, or where you could be near those who are immunocompromised and may not receive full protection from the vaccine. Of course, masks are still required for unvaccinated individuals in indoor public places. Here at City of Vancouver, Masks are still required for the unvaccinated when visiting any city building. Starting this week, Vancouver's Parks and Recreation Department is now encouraging masks for all indoor settings, including the popular Marshall and Furstenberg Community Centers, regardless of your vaccination status. The city's masking guidelines for employees and the public will continue to be evaluated as public health guidelines change in response to COVID-19 infection rates in our community. As a reminder, some city services have started offering in-person hours and meeting opportunities. Vancouver City Council meetings are now offered in a hybrid online and in-person with space capacity limits and physical distancing measures in place for those who wish to attend in person. Our popular virtual meeting format will continue to remain an op option for community participation moving forward. Community members are invited to view the City Council workshop and meeting agendas and register to speak to Council in person or through Zoom at the link on the screen. City's Permit Center and Customer Service Desk here at City Hall is now open with limited hours on Mondays and Wednesdays. Those hours are anticipated to expand to include Fridays starting August 16th. The City's Utility Customer Service Desk, which processes City utility payments at the Vancouver Operations Center on 4th Plain, has resumed full in-person service hours Monday through Friday. Access to most city services 
continues to be available by telephone, email, or online. And for our current list of what is and isn't open to the public for in-person service, please visit the city's website. This week, more reassurance has come for renters who may be facing eviction amid surging COVID cases and slow distribution of federal assistance funding for qualified tenants. On Tuesday, the CDC extended the federal moratorium on evictions through October 3rd for those unable to pay rent. The new moratorium will temporarily halt evictions in counties with substantial and high risk levels of virus transmissions. Clark County's COVID-19 transmission rate is currently considered substantial. This new moratorium complements some of the support offered by Washington's existing housing stability bridge, which is set to end on September 30th. This bridge was established by Governor Inslee as an emergency order to allow additional time to get housing stability funds in place for those unable to pay rent due to the pandemic and economic downturn. Federal funding for rental assistance is being received and managed by Clark County and distributed through their local service providers to eligible low-income households. Demand and need for rent and utility assistance in our community is unprecedented. Over the course of the last year, Clark County has distributed nearly $20 million in rent or utility assistance to nearly 3,000 households. Local nonprofits are now providing close to $1 million in financial assistance for rent and utilities to an average of 100 additional households every week. There are about 1,700 eligible renters who have applied and are still awaiting assistance. Due to this backlog, no new applications for assistance are being accepted at this time. The county continues to work with rental assistance providers to open additional rent assistance spots for tenants to apply as soon as possible. So please watch the county's website for more details to be announced soon. On a similar note, if you're struggling to pay your utilities, Governor Inslee has also issued an extension of the utility moratorium through September 30th. That means the city will continue to keep your water services on and waive late fees and interest despite overdue payments. Customers still have the responsibility to pay for their utility services but have until September 30th to catch up on bills and make payment arrangements to get back on track. If you're experiencing financial hardships and are unable to pay your water and sewer utility bills, please contact Utility Customer Service for help and guidance. Finally, an update for our small business community. The Greater Vancouver Chamber of Commerce is currently offering all Clark County businesses the opportunity to join its Grow the 360 Shop Local program at no cost until August 31st. This virtual gift card program provides an easy way to support small businesses as we rebound from the economic impacts of the pandemic and adding to the numerous grant opportunities available to local small businesses affected by the pandemic, there's a new low interest loan option offered through the Washington State Department of Commerce. If you're a small business or a nonprofit with 50 or fewer employees, you can apply for a loan of up to $150,000 through the small business Flex Fund. The money can be spent flexibly, including on payroll, 
utilities and rent, supplies, marketing, building improvements or repairs, and other business expenses. You can continue to find more small business recovery resources on the city's website. As we all feel the sting of yet another increase in COVID cases, it's important to remember that our collective efforts to get vaccinated make the difference. If you're among the nearly 60% of Clark County residents who are fully vaccinated, you have and will continue to be an active participant in not only slowing, but preventing serious and deadly cases of this awful virus. Thank you, Vancouver, for doing your part by rolling up your sleeves and masking up to keep our businesses open and our community healthy. Have a good weekend.